put a smile on your face when you're moving from place to place place good morning good morning morning good morning morning Good morning viewers, we just had about 7.10 a.m. this morning and welcome back to the Tobago Updates Morning Show coming to you here live from the Port Mall in Scarborough, Tobago. I'm Julian Skeet and we're heading on into our first interview this morning with none other than Breedon Roberts, Tobago Officer of Tutor. And certainly we are at a, a challenge time, one would say, or a time where our social media is continuing to put certain things into the spotlight. Good morning to you, Breedon, and welcome. Good morning, Mr. Ski. Good morning to the viewers, the listeners alike. So this morning we're chatting school violence and moving forward. And, you know, we're going to dive straight on in. Uh, we have seen in recent times making headways, uh, you know, on social media, among other schools. Um, more importantly, the focus on one of our high schools here in Tobago, uh, the issue of school violence. What's the position of tutor uh, as it relates to this matter? Let's start from there. Well, it is definitely concerning that we are seeing the prevalence of these things in, in the, highlighted in the media. However, it, it actually needed to get out because teachers have been grappling with this level of indiscipline for some time. Uh, it's been sensationalized now, which to me is a little bit unfortunate in that we are focusing on the highlight of what is happening at a particular point in time and not the underlying issues and you are seeing the young girls who lead in charge with this 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 bad behavior so we need to see what our children are crying out for we need to analyze our our system and see if we could better cater for it it was needed for some time now but we are getting more of the videos coming out so it shows that we really need to, to get going and putting systems in place. I, I want to ask the very real question. We live in a different time now where certainly social media makes everything accessible almost immediately. Is this really new um, in, in, the, in the, the, the operations of the school system? And I'm speaking comparatively here, Brayden. We're around the same yeah. age. Mm -hmm. Our school days just a few years ago um, compared to now where there's greater access. And even if you look at our parents before within the school system. But I remember even in my time, we used to be trailing persons who were looking to fight us. So, so those school fights were always there. It doesn't mean that it, it is right and that, that it should not be addressed. So it's nothing new at all. We, we need to have, as I have just mentioned, we need to have things in place to keep our young angels, angels as they go through the, the school year. And now where everyone wants to be, a, is that things that influencer, they call it now, a social media influencer. Nice persons into the camera and they, they're doing more to get the negative attention and as they see with politics whatever attention whether positive or negative is attention all, all the same so I, i'm hoping that we listen to the cries of our young ones and we put things in place so that they will seek the positive attention i you know we could we could work towards that but it's not new and i'm i'm thankful to an extent that at least it's been put out there so that we can get the assistance we need it's in the school system. How are, are teachers prepared and trained to deal with this kind of thing? I go out there and I study and I prepare and I come with the capacity and skill set to manage my classroom and yeah. to deliver and so on. Tell us about the teacher's ability because in most instances, um, see even except you have a security, sometimes you have to have that male teacher or that, that firm enough female teacher uh, being able to respond to, to what one might say is the craziness or the miserableness or the, the, the dangers uh, that may be existing are our teachers prepared um, in, 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 in that regard well I'm not certain how prepared our teacher could really be when we analyze our system of education now we would have given all our rights to our children so of course there's no couple punishment you can't speak to a child um, too loudly if they, they, they may be verbal abuse or those kind of things um, we don't have disciplinary procedures that really impactful on, on our students. The moral education is not there as it used to be where we take out church to a large extent out of the schools. We, we do not have that support of the guidance officers in the, in the capacity we really want to have it. So our teachers are left with preparing your lessons in such a way you will captivate our students in a positive way as best as is possible. To say the, the intervention, it's a very scary thing for a teacher. Yes. You, you intervene and just as with the security officer i believe us at mason hall if it ex escalates you are in a, a position where based on how you grab that child hold that child um the child if you have to retaliate based on the child's action you can land yourself into some trouble so we have cautioned our teachers be very careful in intervening of course you can't leave two children to slug with each other but it's very difficult for a teacher to manage that and security 
the security at school is for the compound, eh? Ah. It's not to intervene with fights, or to help teachers with fights. So Very these security officers, they try their best to manage as well. But we really don't have much more than the safety officers that some schools would have. They, we don't have safety officers in primary schools. So it's a, a very challenging thing, and I'm hoping that you see the moral side of it, the, that those values that we could put some more effort into that, to keep our children in the right path. And if I could further add, it's easy for our students to access the training bad music, the, the dance hall music that is influencing them in the wrong path. We, we don't have the church in the school as we used to. How many of our young ones are going to church? So we we getting all the negativity out and are easily accessible to our young ones, but we're not getting the moral education as it ought to be. So the question is, we've, we've seen more recently the Minister of Education uh, speaking about the introduction for those who may get to that point of being, you know, um, uh, out of the school system for some time. Uh, what are your thoughts on that intervention on the part of the Education Ministry? Well, actually, it's... And um, how is that likely to impact Tobago as well? Well, it's a non-intervention, really, you know. <laughs> we, we're preparing for when the children get bad. And the my lot is from 16 up. If we are seeing first foremost and second foremost, what is there for them? So I don't like the idea of looking at the punishment or the intervention for when they get bad. We need to put things in place on the beginning. And as you have mentioned, we would have... When I went, I started at first form in Scarborough Secondary School. We had the fifth form also prefects and the head boy and so would come to the first form class, the second form class. There was kind of that kind of body system where leadership skills in those persons performing that role would be able to be developed. Um, we have student council in some of our schools. We need to reinforce those things, enrich those things. What about the interventions before they get bad? So I, and I'm hearing that the minister putting these things in place, but these things, I, I don't see how it would impact anything. Those persons that are behind with the crime now, they don't expect to be caught. So they misbehave, they carry on how they carry on, and then when they are caught, they deal with the consequences then. We don't want them going that path. So we need to get that body system back in our schools. Um, we need to strengthen our student councils, where we have young persons could strengthen their reporting skills, we could have the reporting to do. We develop young leaders in those kind of systems. We need to have the parents understanding what the school system is, the business sector. That's why we're talking about the Tobago-centric thing. I'm not going to give up on it. There are different persons. I've heard Mr. Vanish James. I heard, I think it was George Leacock as well. Persons who are talking about, may not use the same term, but talking about re reforming our education system where persons can come together and we create the forum where the tourism competitions, we have a young person could shine in that. Signal Hill, who is negatively in the media now, recently had all these awards and so on. It's now been overshadowed. We need to create more avenues for persons to develop that that responsibility that we want within them. Excellent. Uh, one of the areas that we uh, also want to touch on, just to get from the perspective of tutor, um, what would you say are some core things, probably at least two or three, ultimately, that we can start perhaps by doing differently right here uh, in the Tobago space, given our responsibility for education? Because I always believe we have an opportunity to lead the way in some instances if it mm -hmm. isn't being done already at a national level. What would your recommendations be at the level of tutor? And I'm grateful for the question. And, and as I just mentioned with this, the student council, you see, our, our young persons are seeking attention, whether it's positive or negative. The avenue for the positive attention for those who are not so academically inclined, it, it's limited. So they seek the attention in the other means. So as, as mentioned, if we get some of the avenues like the, the woodwork and the, the tourism things and the agriculture, not just at agriculture time or at, at the, the metal work time, it's fused into our mathematics and the grammar and so on. We give those persons a chance. But the city student council, that is something that we can enrich. No, it takes nothing much to have that going. While I was at Black Rock Government School, during the election time, instead of doing the election to see who liked Pierre, the man who liked wherever, we had an election to put in a student council. Nice. And we had a president, we had someone in charge of academics who would monitor, who is doing their homework, who improving, we give them awards on the lines and those things. Those are things we could bring back even now, today. We need to have the resources. The division could do so much. That's why I'm pleading. If we arrange our programs that the business sector could understand what the program of the school is, they would know how to assist. Now, we need the funding. 
But you have to be able to sell a package. You don't invest into anything willy-nilly. So if business, if businesses have an understanding of what the school project and the division is, they can assist us. Those are some of the things we need to hold our principal's hands with and not just leave them to, to get it done or, or to make it happen because it wouldn't happen in isolation. The parents need to be on board. The tutor we are on board, the teachers on board. And we need to have the business sector on board to ensure that these things are successful. We always have initiatives, but if we don't have that collaborative approach, it would only be so much. What are your thoughts specific at, at the reality of some who will see the child has to be disciplined in order to get to that point of an understanding of their greater responsibility. So yes, we can seek to work with those who are not yet at that point to ensure they don't get there. Mm -hmm. But for those who are blatantly and openly um, committing acts that are wrong, uh, how does tutor suggest that we treat with that within the school system? I know schools have their different matrix and so on mm -hmm. for discipline, but how, do you, how does tutor suggest we respond to that? Well, there is this thing I grew up with where devil find works for either hands. So those who we may believe that we've given up on and they're far gone, they may not be so far gone. When I was at the standard five level, there was a young boy that repeated in my class and he gave in less trouble. However, this joy on that young man face whenever he did something, I was praised positively for it. So we, we can't say some persons are far gone and they're beyond reach. They, they want the attention and they need to get an avenue to get it in a positive way for, for, our, for our part. If we don't provide that for them, they would continue doing the things that they would do to get the negative attention. Now, we always look to discipline in the punishment part. Discipline is also that positive part of the, that responsiveness and the, the choosing to do the right thing. We have that aspect of discipline. But we don't have where we could where we do, beat the child, you suspend the child, they go on vacation and come back. You expel the child, what system is there for that child when they go home? They, they go and they come back, what, what changes? So yes, we have the suspension, we have the expulsion and so on, but what after, what, what happens after that? All right. And just before we close this morning, we want to get an idea from Tutor. Uh, what can we see as direct efforts and possible actions moving forward to really advance this kind of um, positive development that Tutor continues to certainly uh, promote? What kind of actions can we look forward to? Well, I should say early in 2024, because we are at the point of that kind of wrap up for 2023 in December here now. Well, what is needed urgently, we need to have consultation with the, the secretary and her team, tutor, we need to have the PTA, we need to come to the table and have the actionables identified and start going. So it's not for us to, to be all hyped about what we're seeing in the media, but to really get down to the business and put some of our systems that we have tried already in the past and, and we need, probably need to enrich them and see what would have caused them to not be as successful and strengthen them but we need to come to the table so i'm inviting i'm asking sorry the secretary to create that forum where all the stakeholders can come to the table as quickly as possible get down to the actionables and start working on them all right thank you very much there again Braden roberts uh, tobago officer for tutor joining us here on set this morning at the tobago updates morning show and certainly there's a call you know given the happenings let's come together the relevant stakeholders are seeking and calling uh, for the forum to be coordinated by the division of education the secretary with responsibility let's come together and have those discussions even if not in december very early uh, at the start of 2024 to really the determine the progressive move where all stakeholders will continue to be on board. Thank you very much again for joining us here uh, on set this morning. The viewers, uh, we are preparing to head uh, on to our next interview. Up next, uh, we have coming up with us uh, Catherine Sterling, and she's the acting inspector out at the Roxborough Police Station in the with the TTPS. So we look forward to those updates uh, coming to us and also speaking to, uh, you know, chatting on that issue around the season of burglary. Certainly just as persons are legitimately busy earning funds to gain items. There are those who are legitimately busy looking for ways to deceive. Uh, so certainly we look forward to those updates coming from the TTPS. We also want to thank you so much, those viewing and those listening to the Tobago Updates Morning Show. And we want to remind you that this is your opportunity to share the live, share the live, share the live. We'll be right back. <laughs>